The three secrets to brick and mortar success. So if you have an offline business and awesome, I've been there before, I've actually set up and run four indoor cycling studios and there are certainly tricks to the trade when it comes to marketing. Hi, my name is Jen and this is my channel, Jen Linian. If you're brand new, then feel free to subscribe, hit that bell notification button as well. I'm here dedicated to releasing daily videos into your inbox, anything around mindset, marketing, meditations, marketing strategies that have worked for me, programs that I've been in, the mentors that tell me X, Y, and Z. I'm here to pass over to you and I want to help you gain success, generating this high quality leads and clients into your brick and mortar business. So anyway, more to follow after this. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. So you have possibly a brick and mortar business, which is awesome, and maybe you're preparing to go back over the after the COVID-19 crisis. It's been quite a challenging time for most, and yeah, I went online in 2014. I do still believe there's, there's a future for brick and mortar businesses. I do obviously think that if you can, try and at least migrate one of your services, if not all of your service, from offline to online. Um, then you can sort of weather these types of unexpected pandemics or recessions, whatever might come in the future. However, if you're a brick and mortar, absolutely brilliant. Continue doing what you're doing best because your community does need you. So give me a shout, what brick and mortar business do you have? Feel free to leave that in the description box below. But there are three tips, three secrets really, in order for you to become a great marketer, in order to market and position your awesome business online. So it could be that you have a article or a certain blog post or a piece of content that you want to share to the world, make it shareable, make it as an incentive for someone to share because that is a great way in order to get your brand, your business known in the industry that you're in um, over the, the social media channels. Most people are on Facebook and there are little things that you can do on your Facebook page, your profile, in order to maximize this, to make your content online shareable. So if you are um, an independent in brick and mortar business owner and you have your own business page plus profile page, don't concentrate too much on the business page as such unless you're paying for adverts because unfortunately it's now become more of a pay to play type platform and most people are not getting the reach they used to enjoy when uh, business pages were at their highest, <laughs> with the height of their success. If you're paying for adverts then great but if not concentrate on your personal profile as uh, you and I know being business owners, brick and mortar, well I used to be but brick and mortar businesses it's all really to do with referrals and the power of meeting people and gaining connections and partnerships so max out on your personal profile it makes it more personable as well people can see like into the business like a window into the business and have a very good uh, insight into the business owner as a person so max out on your personal profile on facebook to 5000 friends um, i would also probably be friends with over with other sorry local businesses in your area as well to try and jump on board a similar pool of people and whatever content that you're offering make it share incentivize um, that the content uh, incentivize the person to share the content in order to um, go viral really on your um, on your content so it could be a free gym membership for a week or it could be a free nail experience if you have a nail bar or it could be a free um, afternoon experience whatever it is that you do but make it shareable and if they were to share it they get incentivized for it depending on where you are what your budget is and what you can actually physically do in your business so secret number two is actually create community engagement when it comes to your campaigns it could be that you're a dentist i've been doing a series of videos recently for dentists and practices that are going to be opening in the next week or so after the covid 19 crisis it could be that you want to be known um, your brand um, as to be a very key part or a player in the community so it could be like you are wanting to shout from the treetops that you are um, uh, offering 100 
uh, children per year free dental um, services. That could be what you are um, want to be known for. And as long as you can create that engagement within your community via that type of campaign, then awesome. So obviously there will be loads of families very interested in putting their child up for a prize draw to be one of the 100 children that gets a free service per year. So again, things like that can go viral very quickly. You can have the help of a funnel, a sales funnel, I'll talk about that in a second, or this can be through organic means as well. So whatever you choose, there's always a way of doing things organically or by paid marketing efforts, but try and always think big, think community, think about how many people you can get for the time or the money that you're putting into your campaigns, but make sure that you're creating at all times community engagement type campaigns. And the third uh, secret is to always offer the next logical step. So always in every type of content that you produce, try and capture their name, their address and even as well their phone number so then you can nurture them with email sequences this is seen as the back end of your business and then you can continually market to them so they may not be ready to buy now should you put a piece of content out there but if you were to capture their information and put them in an email sequence and nurture them th through um, emails off the back end they might be in a position to you know, buy from you in the future. And that's really the third part of any type of business when it's brick and mortar or any online business as well. But you've got to think about lead generation as your first phase. The second phase is a sales process, the journey you're taking your prospects from cold to, um, to warm to then buying. And the third is also then you're nurturing existing clients, but you're also um, nurturing uh, potential prospects as well. So there's so much uh, that you can do to maximize the possibility of new clients, new prospects into your business and if you want to learn more about sales funnels and the power of funnels in themselves and how to capture leads and generate more clients into your business, I would always recommend any of my clients to jump aboard the One Funnel Away Challenge by ClickFunnels. It's got everything that you need as a brick and mortar business owner to generate those high quality clients and leads into your business in a very sustainable way as well. But no doubt you are good at what you do, you've set up a business around your passion, your love which is awesome continue doing what you're doing but are you a good marketer and I know I wasn't when I first started my journey as a spin instructor um, opening my one of four uh, indoor cycling studios back in 2012 I had to learn to become a good marketer in the process and there are ways of shortcutting that experience that process and that is you going into programs such as the 30 day one funnel with challenge by click funnels because you get to learn how to become a marketer which is key it's so essential to your business and there are always ways in order for me to help you as well so I've left a link below uh, feel free to jump on board should you need my bonuses I'm here giving you everything that's helped me along my journey that helps people in the um, two comma club in click funnels and their sort of ring of people there their circle and yes you need to I think just be one step ahead of your competition especially if you have a brick and mortar business if you want to weather things like the pandemic and you want to weather things like a recession that might happen in the um, in society in your community then yes you need to obviously learn to implement the robust marketing strategies if you've got any questions along the way then please let me know I'm always here but um, yeah I will see you in the next video